Hi everybody, it's Brian for GadgetUnit.com and in this video I wanted to give you a quick video tour of my MacBook Air's software setup including all of the apps that I have installed and how I have everything organized. So this is the mid-2012 base 13-inch MacBook Air currently running 10.9.2. I do have a case on here. It is the Spec Smart Shell for the 13-inch MacBook Air in poppy red. It covers the top and the bottom of my MacBook Air just fine. As for the wallpaper that you saw on my desktop, it's called the Topanga Gradient from InterfaceLift.com. Here is my dashboard. There's not too much going on. Everything is misaligned because I'm using a different resolution other than my MacBook Air's native resolution of 1440 by 900. I'm using 1280 by 720 to get or to have a proper 720p video. And here is my notification center. Not a lot going on there. And here is my desktop. There's simply not a lot going on here either. In my status bar, I have the QuickTime icon, Dropbox, iSnap, iClean Memory. Uh, this one is Soundflower, Log Me In, and of course Bluetooth, Time Machine, Wi-Fi, Sound, Battery, Time, Spotlight, and Notification Center. I have two icons on my desktop, my Macintosh HD partition as well as my Windows 8 partition, and of course removable disks will show up on the desktop as well. Here is my dock. I don't have a lot going on here. I have Finder, which of course you cannot remove, Notes, Calendar, Google Chrome, TweetBot, Skype, which I really don't use that much. This is my least opened app, probably on my MacBook Air. Log me in client, messages, mail, iTunes, system preferences, and I do have QuickTime Player here because I'm using this to record the video that you're watching right now. I have my user folder here, as well as an all applications folder, which we'll go ahead and take a look at now. A lot of these stock apps are missing, such as iBooks and Maps. I was able to get rid of those without any problems occurring, especially in the utilities folder, and that's basically because I don't use those applications pretty much at all. So there's no point in having them installed, especially when you're limited to an SSD on your MacBook Air. For applications, I have Photoshop Air Server, which I'll be doing a video on soon. Android File Transfer, which I only use when I'm transferring stuff to an Android review unit that I might have. I use Audacity for recording the audio portion of videos for when I'm actually using a camera. I also have Clean My Mac version 1. I don't like version 2, mainly because of its interface. We also have FileZilla, which is my FTP client that I use. Handbrake, I don't, I can't remember the last time I converted a video on my MacBook Air. I usually use my Windows desktop for that because it's much faster. I have iBackupBot for modifying iPhone backups. I haven't used this in a while either. iClean Memory. Sometimes I want to go in here and optimize memory, usually when uh, before I open up a virtual machine, just so I make sure I have the most memory available to it as possible especially on a MacBook Air with 4 gigabytes of RAM that you cannot upgrade. iPhone Box, which is used for directly accessing the files on an iOS device, jailbroken or not. iSnap, which allows me to quickly snap an application to the left half of the screen, the right half, or maximize it, much like what or much like the way Windows Vista 7 and 8 have all been doing it. Launchpad, I'll show you that in a minute. We also have Office 2011, Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. I use Paragon NTFS for having write access to NTFS drives and partitions. Parallels Desktop I use for accessing my Windows 8 partition here without actually leaving OS X. I usually go into this whenever I want to play a small game such as Roller Coaster Tycoon, something that won't benefit from the performance gains of actually going into Windows natively on the MacBook Air. I have Plist Edit Pro, which I don't use very often. I have SMB Up, also known as Samba, and that allows me to access very quickly the files on my MacBook Air from anywhere on a Windows device or my iOS device on the local network. I have Soundflower, which I currently have set up to pump the computer's audio into QuickTime for doing screen recordings. We also have the Unarchiver, which allows me to open .rar files, and it also allows me to open up, split up, zip, as well as .rar files. I also have Theme Park, which I only use to open up iTunes image files, so sometimes Apple will put out a version of iTunes and there might be a little image of an iPhone or an iPod that has, been, has not been released yet. That only happened a couple times in the past, but I do have this on here just in case you can tell I will. Looks like I haven't even opened it since I last installed OS X Mavericks onto my MacBook Air from scratch. We also have Wi-Fi Explorer, which allows me to analyze the Wi-Fi networks around me. It allows me to figure out which channel I should put my 802.11 uh, 
uh, or my 2.4 gigahertz network at, even though I'm connected to a 5 gigahertz network. It's pretty much to just analyze things for the other devices on the network. And then I have WinClone Pro for making an image of my Windows 8 partition for backup and restore purposes. And now let's go ahead and take a look at my launchpad setup. So it's pretty much organized. Here are all of the utility apps in a utilities folder. Here we have all of the other stock stuff apps in the stock stuff folder. This folder has everything in my dock neatly organized in this folder. I still don't know why there are two LogMeIn clients. One actually goes to the LogMeIn website while the other one actually brings up the client like it's supposed to. Here we have auto start, so those third party apps that you saw in the status bar are all in this folder. Here we have another folder for some Microsoft Office apps. I really wish OS X would have a native ability to let you hide apps, but seeing as iOS doesn't even have that, that's pretty much why OS X doesn't as well. Here we have a utilities folder with applications that I just open rarely. And here we have everything else, including Air Server, FileZilla, Wi Fi Explorer, and so on. So that was just a quick tour of my MacBook Air setup. If you have any questions, comments, or feedback about this or anything else, feel free to leave those down below in the comments area. But that's it with the video. So thanks a lot for watching, and I'll talk to you all very soon.